Good to be here. Always good to be here. Welcome to a second episode of Matt's Withering Art, where I talk about individual works of art, and this allows me or enables me to, uh, to talk about individual artists and individual art movements. Uh, I'm hoping that these videos will become tight. Uh, uh, and tighter and tighter as, they, as the series progresses. Uh, and one of my starting points for this series is my traveling uh, explorations. Or, um, and because I'm in the city of Perugia, uh, a, a, a few days ago I went to visit the Palazzo della Penna, which has a museum, and the museum hosts a permanent exhibition on Gerardo Dottori, who is one of the major exponents uh, of the futurist art movement. I talked about futurism quite a bit in the previous videos, uh, and I did it even provocatively. Uh, I even tried to make a video where I give a brief overview of the art movement, or the movement at large. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to it, a very brief introduction to it. Uh, Futurism was, an, was a movement that emerged in Italy at the start of the 20th century, and it carried through to the fascist uh, years, and, uh, and um, it became associated with fascism. And so as a result, it has become uh, uh, regarded as a very controversial movement. But we won't get stuck into that. What, what uh, Futurism did was uh, it celebrated modernism and it celebrated movement and it celebrated violence. And one of its really controversial uh, aspects is that it, uh, it looked at war as a cleansing mechanism. So obviously, you know, that's one of the reasons why it, it suited the, the fascist ideals so well, really. Um, but the movement was officially birthed when author and poet uh, Filippo Tommaso Marinetti published uh, the Futurist Manifesto in 1909 in the pages of the French newspaper Le Figaro. This was the first of many Futurist manifestos that would be published thereafter and didn't just talk about the arts because Futurism was not a movement that only sought to revolutionize the arts, it really sought to revolutionize uh, life itself and various aspects of life. And one of its central objectives, one of its main aims, was to violently cut its ties with the romanticized past. You can imagine that given the fact that the movement was birthed in Italy, to come up with a concept like cutting its ties with the, cutting ties of the past is so strong because when you think about it, to this day, a lot of the tourism that this country gets is, is from tourists from all over the world who want, to, who want to see historical artifacts and works of art with their own eyes. So here comes futurism that wants to violently cut its ties with it. Um, that's um, and and w one of the reasons it sought to do that is because it really looked to the future as a manifestation of the perfect existence, which was represented by the ideal man, which would be a machine man sort of a person. Um, so right, so um, but back to painting. Well. One of the major painters of this, of the futurist movement, was Gerardo Dottori, who, in fact, could be considered the spokesperson of Marinetti on the topic of painting. He published um, many writings on various newspapers where he represented the official viewpoint on futurism, uh, as far as painting was concerned. Uh, and. Um, he actually came up with a very revolutionary concept that I will talk about now, and it's called aeropittura, but I will refer to it using the term, the English term, aero paintings, uh, so that I don't confuse anybody. Who was Gerardo Dottori? Gerardo Dottori was born in 1884 here in Perugia, and uh, besides painting, two of his great passions were cars and planes. This was a passion that many futurist artists had because, uh, of course, of their fascination with modernity and the way in which cars and planes affected the way in which we perceive reality and in many ways sped it up. So aero painting was a concept that went hand in hand with futurism. 
But we must also keep in mind that in the early days of aviation, there was really no such thing as planes that you know could fit um, lots of people at the same time. At most, they could fit a couple of people. In fact, many planes were light sports aircrafts, and during these days. Flying wasn't very regulated, so you could really fly wherever you wanted. And you can just imagine being a pilot back then and just the freedom that you could feel from just flying into the air and having all of this space where you could just have fun and enjoy enjoy yourself. Well, Dottori, while flying around and just looking down at his native Perugia and its surrounding countryside landscapes and the beauty of it, thought of uh, what became his concept that is known as aero painting. What is aero painting though? Well, simply put, aero paintings are landscape visions from elevated positions where the elements reproduced like hills, lakes, rivers, villages are subject to visual disruptions. And essentially what they do is they offer the viewer the thrill of the new vo viewpoint as well as the thrill of flying. So they're supposed to give you that thrill. Um, right. Um, so, one of the masterpieces of Dottori came in 1926, and it's called Fire in the City. Uh, the painting takes place from the idea of a spectacular scene of a fire in the center of his birthplace, of the medieval city of Perugia, and I will emphasize medieval city. The composition is characterized by a spiral dynamism that is actually one of the main codes in the body of work of Dottori. Uh, usually we see it very prominently when he uh, represents or reproduces the Lake Trasimeno, which is a major lake in the Umbria region in the vicinities of Perugia. Um, here, though, the, the, the force of what usually is represented by the Lake Trasimeno in Dottori's paintings is transposed to this wonderful, wonderfully spectacular fire world, a fire whirl that seems to just swallow the city whole. And um, so, Emphasizing once again that Perugia is traditionally known um, as a medieval city. In fact, we can recognize it quite cl clearly just looking at the painting because the city has virtually remained unchanged since medieval times. I mean, with its roofs and all of its walls and and the the, the fact that it is on a hill. So it's it's a very characteristic landscape. That's a very important aspect because Marinetti was one of the uh, was a fan of this painting because it really saw it as representing a major concern of futurism that I spoke about earlier, which was futurism's objective to cut its ties with the past violently. And so I got this quote that Marinetti said about fire in the city, and I translated it from Italian. He said, "In the fire of the medieval city." Dottori furiously imposes his desire of abstraction and obsessive nightmare. But I struggle to kind of see Dottori as really wanting... Uh, uh, I mean, okay, so while Dottori definitely revels in the spectacle that is created by this fire, and we can see it with the colors and the smoke rising, and it's a very spectacular scene. I struggle to believe that Dottori really wanted to see Perugia burn to the ground. Perhaps he did use the imagery of Perugia burning as a symbolic uh, representation to make a statement about futurism's aims of cutting its ties with the past violently. But I, I, I think that Dottori was full of love for the city where he was born and the surrounding countryside and the Umbrian landscape. And quite simply, the reason why I can safely say that, or I feel like I can safely say that, is because he reproduces it so much in his paintings. You know, the hills, the rivers, the medieval walls, and the houses, the roofs, the Lake Trasimeno that I talked about, and the natural landscape of the region. They're all elements that really appear in his paintings quite a lot, and 
I'm sure that he was also very grateful for the concepts that these elements helped inspire, including the bird's eye view of arrow painting, uh, which, which to me is just um, came up, came about because of a desire that he had to capture the city where he was born and died in 1977. Uh, a desire to capture it uh, in new, modern, and revolutionary ways. So, um, hopefully, this video made sense, and that's where I will stop here. I might make another video about Dottori, because uh, I really like his works, and there's a lot more to be said about it. Uh, like, on the triptych of speed, which I was, uh, I was grateful to have seen with my own eyes. But uh, in the meantime, I hope that uh, you found this video interesting and that it will inspire you to make your own artistic explorations. Thank you very much for watching. Ciao.